Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Friday. Uh, today is the, what is it, the 21st? No, it is not. <laughs> it's the 28th. 28th of October 2022. To Peace Through the Word, Daily Devotional Ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, Benson, Arizona, and LCMS Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod Congregation. And I'm Pastor Ron York of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church. Uh, coming to you this morning, uh, beginning our weekend. And uh, hopefully you're having a good day and getting ready for the weekend, no matter where you're chiming in worldwide to this particular piece of ministry. We thank you immensely as always. And as always, it is deeply appreciated and never for, for you know taken for granted. And... Uh, you need to be reminded of that, okay? So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Brothers and sisters, this morning we're going to be looking at daily bread. And in the uh, Lord's Prayer, we talk about that. We say, give us our daily bread. It's the only petition in that prayer that we're asking anything for ourselves. So what does that mean? Give us our daily bread. What is encompassed? in what we're praying for when we say that. Give us our daily bread. Pray that will bless you tremendously, encourage you, and inspire you, and give you genuine real peace this morning as we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, I'm going to share with you uh, again the psalm, uh, and I'm going to share with you this one, uh, Psalm 53. And again, this is a psalm of instruction. And it's a prophecy uh, that uh, Dr. Martin Luther uh, calls to our attention. And uh, in, in this psalm, um, what God is doing is he's rebuking those who are faithless. Um, and those that persecute the true doctrine and the true teachers of Holy Scripture. And we're seeing that proliferately here in the United States. Um, the government that is currently in power uh, is incredibly evil. It is very anti-Christian. It is very anti-Bible. Uh, it does not want to hear uh, scripture. It doesn't want to hear what uh, pastors of the Christian church have to say. And they don't want that. They don't want that. But here's the sad thing too. Some Christians don't want to hear it either. So-called Christians. They, they label themselves Christian, think they are Christian, but yet they don't want to hear the truth of Scripture when it's presented to them. Very dangerous things that are, that are happening uh, in our day today. And, uh, and this psalm addresses that quite profoundly. So uh, I pray that you'll listen to it very closely. Psalm 53 says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Now notice who it is who's calling somebody a fool. It's not me. It's God. And God says, a fool says in his heart, there is no God. And we got a lot of foolish people that are testifying to that. That there is no God because they're doing what they think. Uh, it's what their opinions uh, dictate. It's what they want. It's what their desires. It's their agenda. And so it's all about them. When in reality, no, it is not. It's all about Jesus Christ, not you at all. But so they say, no, there is no God. If there is, it's me. So they are corrupt, doing abominable iniquity. And then God says, there is none who does good. Now, humanity, especially here in the United States, takes a different view. They say, oh, yes, there is. I, I, I do good. I'm really not all that bad. <laughs> well, there's a bit of truth in that. You're a lot worse. Okay. So that's just the, the hard reality. There is none 
who does good, God says. None. Nobody. So God looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. Again, this is God. So he says, they have all fallen away. Together they have become corrupt. He says, there is none who does good. And then for added emphasis, he says, not even one person. So have those who work evil no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon God? It's exactly where the United States is. They... There they are in great terror, where there is no terror. For God scatters the bones of him who encamps against you. You put them to shame, for God has rejected them. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion when God restores the fortunes of his people. Let Jacob rejoice, let Israel be glad. So let's see how Dr. Martin Luther prays this particular psalm, Psalm 53. Listen, please. Lord, our Savior, please fortify our hearts with the faith of your word against the foul contamination of the infidelity of these last days, when folly is called science and is lauded to the skies. Cause us to grow in faith that our hearts may be rooted and grounded in the saving truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow. Praise Jesus. <laughs> so, O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver us. Make haste to help us, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord, brothers and sisters. Thanks be to God. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. And so, my brothers and sisters, the passage of Scripture that our devotional wants to unpack for us with regard to daily bread is St. Matthew chapter 15, verse 37. And this is the account of Jesus feeding the 5,000. <laughs> so listen to what transpires here. It says, then they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up seven baskets full of the broken pieces that were left over. So after feeding 5,000 people with only two fish and five loaves of bread, they had 12 baskets, uh, uh, excuse me, seven baskets full of the broken pieces left over. Is there anything too hard for God? Nope, not hardly. So let's see how our devotional unpacks this for us this morning. We need to eat every day. God provides a way for us to get food, whether we buy it or someone gives it to us. However we get our food, it is God who provides it for us. Sometimes we may worry that we will not have enough to eat. Maybe it's because we're short on money or it could be because the store is out of the type of food that we need for a very restrictive diet. God knows what we need and he can provide for us just as he did with the seven loaves and a few fish. It's the same God. Jesus says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. The problem isn't with God. The problem is always with us. We don't trust that. So our Lord not only provides food for our bodies, but he also provides us with spiritual food. He gives us his word, which tells us about our sins and the need for a savior and how Jesus is that savior. And it's just Jesus. It's not Jesus plus and then you fill in the blank. It's just Jesus. No one else and no thing else. So through the Bible, he feeds us with the gospel, which tells us about our forgiveness. He also gives us baptism, the sacraments, through which he creates faith in the Lord's Supper, through which he strengthens our faith and forgives us our sins. And see, but yeah, we've got Christian denominations that don't believe any of that. And yet they're still going to label themselves Christian. Mm, big problem. 
So just as we need food for our bodies to stay alive, we also need food for our souls to stay alive spiritually, which comes to us through word and sacrament ministry, nothing else. And you can't say word or sacrament ministry. In other words, it's just the word, but we discount the sacraments. Uh Uh-uh, that's not God's recipe. That may be yours, but you're not God. Okay, so let us daily receive both types of food that Jesus provides for us. Let us regularly worship God and study his word. Word and sacrament ministry. All right, so let's pray. (laughs) So dear Jesus, thank you for providing physical and spiritual food. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer, and so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And brothers and sisters, we want to profess the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. And so together we profess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So hear our prayer, O Lord, let our cries come to you. In the day of our troubles, we call upon you, for you answer us. Hide your face from our sins and blot out all our iniquities. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and uphold us with a willing spirit because your steadfast love is better than life. Our lips will praise you for you have been our help and in the shadow of your wings we will sing for joy. Teach us your way, O Lord, that we may walk in your truths and unite our hearts to fear your name. We give thanks to you, O Lord, our God, with our whole heart and we will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. And may those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to our prayer and listen to our pleas for grace. Let us pray. We thank you, our heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger. And we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings and life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, thank you so much for chiming in this morning to Peace of the Word. Lynn Lawrence, good morning, and thank you, my dear, for chiming in in Benson, Arizona, uh, as well. So it's a beautiful day here in Cochise County, southern Arizona. Uh, I pray that you will enjoy the blessings of our Lord in abundance. And so the wheels and flaps have been retracted, and I convey to each and every one of you tremendous blue skies.